go through the recording. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, thank you everyone for the joining for today's session and uh, thank you Shalanya for arranging it. And uh, yes, uh, I'm Reema Jani and uh, I have been working on primitive reflexes. As uh, you all know, I have uh, done my master in physiotherapy in pediatric science. So before the, uh, starting the session, I would like to thank one of the fellow therapists. Uh, her name is uh, Milani uh, Shah and uh, she is the one who asked me about primitive reflexes uh, during lockdown. Today I'll just share the screen about a very beautiful uh, PPT that she has made which involves each and every reflexes. Uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, the PPT is uh, made by Milani Shah. I was the one guiding her. And today I'll be uh, taking help of this PPT in between. Of course, I'm not going to keep the entire session PPT based because it's more of a discussion thing. Many of you have already uh, gone through the primitive reflexes video and I'm sure you would be practicing that too. Now, uh, addressing the question that uh, Shalanya told me, like uh, what are the primitive reflexes? How we can help integrate them and uh, how many exercises uh, needs to be done uh, for integration of the primitive reflexes so uh, first thing uh, what are the primitive reflexes uh, see uh, primitive reflexes are uh, present in all of us and when we say reflex it is something some action which is occurring without any thought process okay the response again i would request you please stay on mute okay yeah yes sushma okay now uh as i said earlier it is an inborn response which is occurring from our bodies to any stimulus and during that response we are not going through any kind of thought process say for example if i want to pick up something like my hand will move ahead and there's one uh mug or glass in front of me and I'm picking it up now there is of course a thought process no doubt it's a very quick thought process but it is there right and we are executing a task when we are executing a task our brain is sending signals to do certain tasks to do certain move okay now what happens in reflex there is some stimulus it could be tactile stimulus it could be auditory stimulus any kind of stimulus is there and our body is reacting to that stimulus and that response or reaction is very quick because it's a reflex so in reflexes it's a very quick reaction and it doesn't involve a thought process so when i'm repeating this thought process now thought process or uh, the complex thinking is done by our cerebral cortex the higher center okay now in reflexes the cortex is not involved of course, we do have cortical reflexes and those cortical reflexes are present in all of us. They need not to be integrated. Okay. And when I'm repeating this uh, integrated, non-integrated, so in medical jargon, integration of reflex means disappearance of reflex. Okay. And retained reflex means reflex is still present. Clear? I hope I'm clear up till now and uh, I think there are a uh, few questions and comments. Questions you can ask me directly by unmuting. That's fine. So others can also know it. Uh, just a second. Ma'am, I have a quick question. You said that during today's session, we would be understanding what is reflex, what are the exercises, which is great. Uh, but my question is, ma'am, that seeing my kid today, how I can actually gauge or uh, understand whether my kid need it or not? Okay, fine. Yes. See, let me tell you. Uh, if uh, you see certain uh, signs or symptoms in your child uh, related to uh, their posture, okay, if uh, repeatedly, even if uh, by giving some strengthening exercises, uh, giving continuous instruction to your child, if you see that your child is not assuming a good posture, if your child's arousal level is not optimum, 
like see we need optimum arousal level to learn anything okay if the child's arousal level is not optimum then they are not able uh, to focus and learn then if your child is fidgeting continuously if they have any issues like uh, spacing between the letters like reading and writing issues they have skipped the milestones like crawling it's a very important milestone and of course if they are having motor or speech or cognitive delays then this are uh, things that uh, bring us uh, our focus to like let us let us check if the reflexes are integrated or not then of course we have to go through uh, assessment or certain tests which will help us to identify like uh, which reflexes are integrated and which reflexes are not integrated of course you need to test for that and uh, in my videos i have tried to show the treat uh, assessment aspect as well not just the treatment of the reflexes you need to check individually for all the reflexes of course there will be underlying um, uh, signs and symptoms that this reflex could be not integrated say for example if we have a child sitting in a classroom uh after giving all the therapies, uh, interacting with the teacher and uh, providing uh, whatever possible resources to the child, if you find that child is uh, continuously fidgeting when uh, they are sitting in such a way that their back is supported, okay, on a bench or something is there in, on their back and they are continuously moving their body. Now, if I'll be there observing such child, the first thing that will come to my mind is, let us check for spinal gallant reflex. Now, again, okay, before checking it, I will ask a few questions. Like, uh, is your child is having problem like um, bed wetting, like even beyond certain age, if still child is suffering, so problems like bed wetting, uh, then uh, of course that uh, strengthens my suspicion or uh, my query like, uh, okay, spinal gallant reflex would not have been integrated well. So, there are certain uh, underlying things uh, like uh, uh, the movements or the uh, features that child exhibits yes and at the How same time when we check for the reflexes and if the test suggests that the reflex is not integrated then of course we have to go with the reflex integration process uh sorry if i'm uh, got, got it uh, got yes, it yes. got it ma'am thank you thank okay. you ma'am okay and but I will how many go to your videos okay Ma'am, yes, how sir. many reflexes are there? There are more than 20 reflexes. Uh, just to uh, show you a quick list of it. Like they are controlled by different levels. Say if, uh, if I divide it uh, according to the levels. Okay, classification of reflexes based on the level. Level means the area of our nervous system controlling it. In our nervous system, all of us know about brain. Okay, but there are different parts of nervous system. Brain or cortex is the highest center and uh, when i explain it to students i explain like uh, the cortex is the principal of an institute then below it uh, we call it midbrain okay the midbrain level is a uh, class teacher okay then mid below it is the brain stem brain stem is a uh, class monitor or class representative cr we call and then comes the spinal level the flexes is the first benches they are the first bench students are spinal level reflexes i'm just giving this as an illustration to understand it how the control happens in our nervous system okay principal is the ultimate control but principal is not going to be present in each and every classroom to see that everyone is in discipline or not okay right and last but not the least all the other students apart from the first benches they are the automatic reactions or automatic reflexes okay now there are automatic reflexes that is n number of uh, students in the class then comes the first benches that is the spinal level reflexes that will come into action whenever they feel uh, like class is making noise they'll just turn around and say Shh, everyone please keep silence like that the students in the class okay then comes class monitor the brain stem who will supervising even the first benchers the entire class will give report to the class teacher to if required they will give report to the principal everything okay so that is spinal cord level of reflexes we have or oh, sorry brain stem level reflexes that we have then the midbrain is the class teacher okay whenever uh, the control goes upwards like uh, it's an hierarchy of reflexes first the automatic reactions happen in the body a child learns certain thing with automatic reactions 
after that automatic reactions uh, the spinal cord reflexes occur or uh, they take the control then the brain stem level reflexes take the control and the spinal cord level reflexes will be integrated by that time okay most of the reflexes uh, are uh, appearing and disappearing in this uh, level fashion like this way uh, going from automatic reactions to uh, spinal cord level brain stem level then the midbrain reflexes you know, that is the class teacher controlling the class okay so that's the midbrain or many of the postural reflexes are also uh, with mid uh, midbrain okay and uh, certain midbrain level reflexes are present in all of us at present also so they remain throughout the life okay so class teacher has control throughout the year on the class and the ultimate control principal principal the cortex so the cortical reflexes are present in all of us we need it if cortical reflexes are not there now if principal is not there in the uh, institute what will happen class teacher will take the control of that class she will be the one or he will be the one who will be uh, going uh, like uh, looking out that nothing goes wrong okay so what happens when the cortical reflexes disappear or cortical reflexes are not appearing cortical reflexes are not appearing means our nervous system is not getting mature enough to take the control of our body so what will happen the midbrain level reflexes will appear will take the control okay if midbrain if there is some injury or uh, uh, sometimes there is uh, even delayed in maturation okay when a child is born the nervous system is not completely mature okay principal is not there midbrain level the class teacher is not there then all these reflexes will be uh, taking control on our body on a child's body and they will be responding according to this reflexes so it's a hierarchy reflexes are based on the hierarchy and I'll again uh, share the screen as we are discussing this, uh, how many uh, reflexes are there in just a second. Now, everyone can uh, see the screen. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, just a second. Now see, uh, this is just an illustration to show you what is the reflex arc or what happens, okay? Now this is physiology. Now as you can see, there's a blue line over here. The blue line, blue, sorry, the blue line over here is a sensory uh, nerve fiber, sensation. The uh, sensory nerve fiber carries different sensations. It could be visual, it could be auditory, it could be tactile. Tactile means related to touch. Here in this example, I have shown a layer of skin. So, of course, uh, maximum uh, amount of sensations that uh, we take is from our skin via touch, via pressure, via temperature. Okay, all the sensations are perceived by skin. Skin has receptors for this different sensation. Now, skin will carry the receptors will pass this uh, information sensory information to the sensory nerve fiber we call it afferent afferent it's going towards the nervous system okay now after that this information is reaching to this is a section of spinal cord it's reaching to spinal cord over there there is an integration center this green line okay all it is having interneuron which connects sensory fiber with the motor fiber motor fiber means whenever we are given some response it is in form of some kind of movement right so motor fiber will be signaling the muscles to do some movement now as you can see this is a section of spinal cord and spinal cord doesn't have ability to think okay I was emphasizing continuously on the thought process earlier when we started the session. So, when we are uh, taking some information and our nervous system is giving some uh, output or some command to our body to respond without thought process, then it is known as a reflex arc. arc okay, it is not a complete circle over here. So, this is a reflex arc. Now, moving on further. Just a second. Uh, there are two people in the waiting room. Uh, let us admit them.
Okay, fine. So this is about the reflex arc. Uh, clear everyone up till now? Everyone is clear up till now? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ah. Okay, fine. Ah. Are those three stay on you? Okay, fine. So, as I was saying, uh, the hierarchy of reflexes, as you can see over here, there are automatic reflexes, spinal level reflexes, brainstem level reflexes, midbrain level reflexes, and cortical reflexes. Now, when we talk about automatic reflexes, those are Modo reflex, Galen's trunk reflex, parachute reflex, and land use reflex. Now, I would like to address the doubts related to these four reflexes. Um, I hope you have uh, heard about Modo's reflex. So I have question, ma'am, regarding yes. motor reflex. Yes, dear. So how can we test uh, uh, whether it is integrated or not? So uh, uh, I worked on that, and uh, uh, there are some changes I saw, but I couldn't figure out whether it is integrated or not. So how can I test that? Yes. See, uh, checking Modo's reflex is quite difficult. You know why? Modo's reflex is, as I said, automatic reflex. Uh, checking it is uh, not with the physical uh, way, actually. How I check it is, Modo's reflex is responsible for keeping us in fight or flight situation. So, if you notice that your child is continuously in fight or flight mode, when I see in a fight or flight mode, that either they are in a state to take off like they are in a state to just move around and uh, trying to uh, uh, play with different things continuously and leaving uh, a play in between like they are not completing the task but they are continuously moving from one task to another second thing if your child is continuously in a stressful situation and then if sudden noise or sudden uh, uh, change in the, the surrounding is frightening them. If you notice those expressions, that there should be a click. That like, okay, there could be something wrong with the Modo's reflex. And yes, one another reflex over here. Fear paralysis reflex. Fear paralysis reflex gets converted into Modo's reflex, and then it gets integrated. Okay. Now, fear paralysis reflex again, uh, being fearful. Okay, like uh, if there is some sudden noise or sound, and if your child is just moving their hands out like this as in, in a shop. Like what you need to do is there should be a complete silence and drop something like um, which is not in their vision. Okay. The vision should be occluded or you can just uh, drop something from the back. Like this is a steel glass, this kind of sound. And if you notice that there's change in their body posture in a shocking state, then the returning movement is like this. If they return like this, then of course, the Modo's reflex is not completely integrated. Along with that, you also need to have all this uh, background uh, signs that I said earlier. The child remaining in a stressful situation, fight or flight mode. So those all things combined together will give you an indication that yes, the Modo's reflex is not integrated and you need to do exercises for that. Uh, I would like to know, uh, Jyoti, from you, that what are the changes that you observed after doing uh, integration exercises for Modo's reflex? So I saw that he he was having gravitational insecurity before. So I saw that he's gone. He was not that much afraid. I mean, he was not afraid when he um, uh, when he goes down like that. Okay, so as I said earlier, no, fear paralysis reflex gets integrated into Modo's reflex. So if your child is uh, fearful of uh, certain uh, situations, and yes, when we are addressing gravitational insecurity, that clicks us that 
vestibular system is involved over here and when i demonstrated that sound okay that sudden sound giving flight flu uh, response from a child now the sound is processed by our ear and the semicircular canals this ear and semicircular canals are very much linked with vestibular system okay our vestibular system is responsible for balance okay and for all the gravitational issues vestibular system functions and vestibular system has a strong link with our ear and the ear canal the system which processes sound information okay and uh, this is uh, there's uh, some link with this of course i will not go in detail because again that's a vast topic uh, there is always a link of chronic ear infection and features of asd or asd together many parents many parents would have noticed that a child with autism spectrum of disorder have frequent ear infections i hope uh, I parents ma'am yeah yeah even my son had frequent ear infections before so uh, i also observed that after working on that few months uh, i i haven't seen any ear infections for a year actually one year but recently he got it again so does that mean it is retained again no see there could be many reasons along with the primitive reflexes of course our body is a single unit each and every system is linked with other system uh, you would have heard about uh, the digestive issues or the gut health of uh, kids having um, asd or sensory issues okay mm -hmm. now our immunity our gut health plays an important role but yes when there is stress when there is stressful situation when i am in fight or flight mode okay my body will be releasing a hormone known as cortisol okay that stress hormone will be circulating throughout my body and that will hamper my digestive system and if my digestive system gets hampered my immunity gets hampered if my immunity gets hampered i will encounter different kind of infections in my body and as uh, discussed over here is the ear infection whenever there is infection our body is not able to fight certain bacteria or microorganisms which are causing the infection so here the entire system is linked so we also need to focus like this reflex might not have completely reappeared but if your child is given not the same exercises but similar so today we will also see how you can incorporate uh, primitive reflex exercises in a fun way or even the soothing environment at times uh, like the deep pressure, the modulation under mat. I hope uh, you people will be aware about modulation under mat that we give deep ball uh, pressure with ball or ball stone or heavy object to the entire body. That relaxes the body. So this uh, stressful situation comes down. The body gets calmed down. So you also need to check, Jyoti, if there is ear infection again after one year, is there any issue related to uh, your child's uh, gut health or digestive system as well? okay okay yes, yes. okay uh, if the me uh, meeting will end uh, within a few minutes kindly rejoin with the same uh, uh, id password okay yes yeah another question ma'am ma i have a question yes so um, i tried integrating moro reflex my daughter by doing the starfish exercise yes. but um, um, even for a couple of months her uh, shouting and uh, the immediate fighting response for anything yeah. for anything and everything her first reaction is the fighting that is also thing and also she tends to be upside down most of the time and her ot says it's vestibular, vestibular. so i'm unable to find out if it is all related to moro reflex or some other reflexes in picture See, as I said earlier, you know, Moro's reflex, uh, there is a response to sound. Sound is also a sensation, okay? The auditory sensory system processes it and it is linked to vestibular system. So the uh, signs and symptoms that she is exhibiting by hanging upside down and all is vestibular seeking. She is seeking that vestibular input constantly. Of course, if she is seeking it, we need to provide it 
vestibular diet or vestibular sensory diet in form of different exercises which addresses the vestibular system and at the same time if you have already done molo reflex integration i would like to know how many repetitions or how many days you are giving it because this will uh, uh, help me solve already there is a doubt related to number of repetitions and the frequency of the exercises so let me know first like uh, how much repetitions or how many days in a week you have gone through those exercises ma'am i have done it like close to 3 months continuously and almost 5 days in a week but uh, just once and uh, 5 5 times of uh, starfish well, every day okay okay now see over here, when we are doing reflex integration, the frequency of exercises matters the most. No doubt, even if the exercise is very simple, the frequency of exercises matters. Why? What we are doing with reflex integration exercises? How we are integrating reflex with these exercises? We are making that reflex undergo fatigue. Okay? Now, understand first what is a reflex again. Again, I am explaining when it is a reflex simple thing we have a hot uh, object of course this is not hot so i'm able to touch it but imagine there is a hot object lying in front of you and you are suddenly yeah, touching fun. it what will be the response you will move away your hand okay all the females can uh, relate to this like in the morning if we have something to lift and we if we don't know it's hot we just uh, remove our hand from that object now at the same time if i know like okay i touched it at it's hot and I took my hand, but again, I need to somehow go closer to it. Then what will be uh, the process I will go through? I'll go through a thought process. What I'll do? I'll try to manage somehow to take something nearby that hot object in such a precise way that I don't touch it. Okay. How it happened? My body or my brain intervened. Okay. My brain intervened like to protect myself. To protect myself, I removed my hand. Now, next time my brain knows like this is hot, but still I need to execute some task nearby and I need to move my hand from a hot object and I should not touch it. So, my brain will make a very precise movement, will give command accordingly that I don't touch it. Okay. Or else what will happen? If my brain is not intervening, the reflex will be still present. How? I'll again touch it. I'll feel hot. I'll again touch it. I'll feel hot. At certain point of time, the reflex will get tired. Like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with all this. You are constantly doing the same thing and damaging your body. Okay, so the reflex will get fatigued. Now, all those reflexes, all those primitive reflexes, they have tendency to go fatigue. And at that time, the brain has to intervene. Now, what we want, we want that cortex to take the control. We want brain to have thought process in each and every movement. We don't want movements without thought process or all the issues occurring because of retained primitive reflex. So we want reflexes to get tired and to make them fatigue, make them undergo fatigue. We need to do repetitions like 30, 40, 50, 60 repetitions also in a day. I know when I'm saying 60 repetitions, it's tiring. But initially, the frequency of exercises the number of repetitions that you do matters the more most second thing if you are integrating reflexes now once if you are uh, it was janvi who asked me this question uh janvi when you are integrating reflexes if you are doing it for five days uh, in a week and doing it for three months okay now then you need to check out the number of times that you have done okay i suggest you go with increase in number of repetitions second thing if that reflex is not integrating or if you are not seeing any change then you need to check for the other reflexes as well and based on the hierarchy level, okay again based on the hierarchy means those reflexes and automatic reflex after that you need to check for the final chord level reflexes i again request please everyone stay on mute Fine. Uh, yes, Janvi? Ma'am, yes. Yes. Ma'am, so I want to ask if all the symptoms uh, you told that all are not present, but if some are present, then it is also moro. 
Yes, uh, see, there is a term known as partial integration of the things. Okay, so you need to okay. still work on further, even in ATNR, no? we uh, notice it regularly that ATNR sometimes is present on, only on one side. ATNR, I hope uh, people would be aware about it that when we turn head to one side, no? the this is occipital side, this is facial side. Okay, I'm turning my head. This is my occipital side. It will. It has tendency to go into flexion at elbow joint. Okay, my elbows will bend in whichever position I am. In standing, in quadruped position, mostly when we are test, testing ATNR, what we do is we make the child assume a horse position or a quadruped uh, kneeling position. Why? Because we want to fix the terminal joints or the distal joints. We just want that their palms remain on ground. The jo this last joints remains fixed on the ground and we are just moving the head to one side to notice if there is elbow bending on the occipital side but if my atnr is not integrated if it is not integrated this will happen in any position even in sitting also i am turning my head my reflexly okay not purposefully if someone is turning my head my elbow will go into bending position or sudden turning of head will lead to elbow flexion or elbow bending on the occipital side and straightening of elbow or hyper extension of the elbow may occur on the facial side. Now, when I say on one side it could be integrated, on another side it could not be integrated, I have noticed that when we are doing the movement on opposite side, like this was my left, when I am turning it on the right side, I am not noticing this. It's it's completely fine. Both are extended. Both can be flexed. Anything is happening. It's not controlling my limbs. My uh, arms are not getting controlled my, by my head movement on the right side. Okay. So this is also noticed at times that on one side we are seeing uh, the features of uh, retained ATNR and on opposite side we are not noticing it. And that suggests just... Uh, there's someone asking for the reflex integrated video link. Uh, can you please tell me exactly like uh, what uh, you are asking for? I didn't got it. Someone has asked in the comment section. Reflex integration exercises you are suggesting now for that any video link and share. Uh, it's already there. That's uh, why I'm uh, directly uh, solving the queries, dear. Because I suppose that everyone has uh, gone through the videos already because it's from that platform only. Uh, uh, yes. 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 Uh, yes. If a particular reflex is already integrated, means again, if you're doing a, uh, that kind of ATNR exercises. Will it be harmful to the kid? Like it will be harmful or uh, not have any No, effect? it won't be harmful there. Don't worry. Uh, it won't be harmful. But here, what will the, happen is... Yesterday we tested for okay. Yeah. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Tell me. Because we were doing ATNR exercises, but uh, I assessed my kid. She's not having that uh, reflex. It is integrator only. So mm. I thought whether it will be harmful if we have already done because we have already done few exercises for related to it in a that's why I asked. Okay, yes. See, the first thing it won't be harmful, but there is one disadvantage. Disadvantage is in that particular time, like all of us have 24 hours, our child has 24 hours, and we have a lot of other things to teach our child. If we are doing that exercises which is not required. Okay, then it's not going to harm. But in that same time, we can train for other reflexes. Like we can work on the other reflexes if they are not integrated. Or if you find that all the reflexes are integrated, then you need to work on the balance reactions, the postural reflexes. Okay, the balance reactions, the example will be if I am uh, currently I'm sitting, of course, but just suppose that I'm standing and if someone is pushing me, my balance reaction would be, I'll just uh, extend my this hand on the opposite side. If I'm getting pushed from my right side, my left hand will go into extension. Why? 
elbow will get extended will straightened out so that i can hold on something okay my feet will move like i will uh, increase the base of support so that i don't fall down and at the same time my hand on the side from which i got a push will go into flexion like this to protect my body so that i don't fall down if someone pushes me or if there is some sudden jerky movement and i may fall down so my this reaction is balance reaction or postural reaction so balance reactions come at last and balance reactions remain throughout life okay so uh, say for example uh, if you notice that your child is very good in targeting activities even if you are making your child stand on you know, a swing and target on different areas and at the same time if you are calling them like uh, if you are making a child simple example standing on a swing swing okay swing is unstable surface they are standing on a swing you are having some target in front which the child has to hit with a ball or an object they are able to hit it very well and at the same time if you are giving some command from behind say for example there are two targets one black one white and if you say now black now white and they are able to process that constant auditory input they are having some visual target in front of them and at the same time they are standing on an unstable surface if see the, the thing which i am telling just now it's very very important if you see that your child is doing this activity very well then congratulations your child has a very good attention very good focus concentration they are constantly listening to you so they are not losing like if, if you are switching your commands they are able to process it at the same time they are on an unsteady surface and they are managing your body this one simple example okay but it's very simple when i am saying this to do this is a really tough task okay so if you notice that your child is able to process auditory information very quickly at the same time they are able to respond it in a motor way motor means with a movement you are telling them to target on black target on white different colors so constantly they are responding with movement based on the command that you are giving them okay and at the same time they are processing the visual information in front of them and they are on an unsteady surface so they have to maintain that balance at the same time body balance okay so the this entire process needs a higher control the cortex if the cortex is functioning very well then and then only this can be done very well getting it uh, <coughs> ma'am this is ashwin uh, just yes. a follow up yes. question right to this sorry my voice is a bit uh, yes bad. others others please go on mute uh, ashwin you may go further others please go on mute for a while mm -hmm. So, ma'am, just similar to what you explained, right? So we tried to do this activity on a gym ball. Yes. So hmm. he is able to stand on his own on both the feet. Good. Then we leave him, or we just hold the ball, and he is standing without any support. Good. Now, when we give him some command, right? He is taking a time to process. Basically, he is thinking like, okay, what I have to do now? So it is taking a bit of a time. It's not instantaneous. But still, if they are processing that auditory input and they are able to execute it, then it's fine. That some amount of latent period is there. I'm I'm yes. uh, understanding this. Like there is some delay in execution or in motor response to that auditory command. But then still, it's good thing your child is progressing. If you notice that they are able to process that auditory command, give motor response to some visual stimuli. And at the same time, balancing themselves on an unsteady surface, like and on a gym ball, if they are able to stand and maintain that balance, they have got a good core muscles. Now, see, as I said earlier, our body is entire single unit. Okay, there is nothing like a different skeletal system, different muscular system, and different nervous system. All has to work together. If I am having a strong core muscles, okay, then and then only I can maintain that balance. So both the thing, muscular system and nervous system. Are working well in connection to each other. So all the three systems, skeletal, muscular, and nervous system, when they are well coordinated, you get amazing response from child or adult both. Okay, that you will see also many adults whose reflexes, primitive reflexes, are not integrated or they have reappeared because of some neurological issues. Okay, whenever there is some damage to the cerebral cortex, the primitive reflexes will reappear. It's like if your principal 
is going for a few days of leave okay or if the principal resigns then the chance that the class teacher has to take control fine so that way uh, if uh, ashwin you are seeing that your uh, the child is able to respond the auditory uh, commands they are able to process it and go ahead further then congratulations you are moving further in this journey and i feel that the reflexes are integrated of course if there are no other uh, things like uh, as i said earlier constant fidgeting fight or flight situation stressful situation emotional outbursts or the reading writing issues if there's no other things uh, then of course you can go ahead further if there is any one of the thing present then again you need to check out if pertaining to that thing if any reflex is partially integrated or weakly integrated or not and based on the reflexes i have mentioned in my videos that what will be the uh, real life situations that you will observe i'll just uh, quote one example or uh, i'll just discuss one reflex over here at present i'll just share that everyone can uh, see the screen yeah 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 okay okay so this is a uh, gallon trunk incubator and uh, here the stimulus there will be uh, i'll just uh, the stimulus is uh, on one side of the trunk we are stroking okay on one side and on that side the response will be lateral bending or twitching of back on that side and this needs to be integrated by three to nine months of age and if it is not integrated then what could be the possible things possible signs and symptoms that you will notice okay now there will be delayed in preparation of crawling and walking or even sometimes crawling milestone will be missing in that child or they won't like to do crawling activities they will resist when you are giving crawling exercises they will uh, show resistance to it they will find problem in uh, uh, urination so bad wetting problems could occur toilet training could be difficult at times tactile hypersensitivity will be there there will be like if even uh, someone is uh, touching them their defense system gets activated and they don't like it uh, gait gait means walking pattern can be affected which can lead to limp or can contribute to scoliosis scoliosis is a skeletal deformity of spine so skeletal system might get affected if this reflex is not integrated there will be inability to sit still if you are trying that your child should sit for meditation and they are not able to sit they are constantly moving like this like they are tilting one side or other side and they're not able to sit still if they have short term memory loss or inability to concentrate fidgeting is present then this all things will be uh, suggesting that uh, gallen's trunk incurvatum is uh, present the reflex is still present of course the fidgeting thing will be the first thing uh, coming from the school like the teachers will say like your child is not able to sit at one place they are not able to sit still they are listening to what we are seeing uh, saying but they are not sitting still so ashwin over here why i gave this example is if the balancing thing is good they are processing the auditory information they are giving a motor response to it and visual uh, reacting to visual stimulus or the targets and it's a very good thing just do check that if there is any kind of fidgeting okay is there or not otherwise go ahead the way you are going Clear, Ashwin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Now, uh, we had few questions popping up uh, in the chats. Uh, if uh, someone can just ask it, it will be better. What will... Uh, just a second. Um, let me read. My daughter is 10 years now. Can I proceed with these reflexes? Will that be helpful? Yes, as I said, no, even in adults also, uh, we do notice that some reflexes are partially integrated or there is decrease in synapses in our brain. See what happens na, as a sign of aging. So for 10 year old, of course, you proceed further. 
you can go ahead it's not like uh, the flexors needs to be targeted at a very early age if targeted at, at an early age of course you will get uh, early results okay now another thing which i was trying to say is about the adults or the teenagers what happens now as we age further the system of our body is designed in such a way that the neural connections decrease in number okay up till certain age the more and more number of synapses are present and we can increase this neural connections with increase in age the neural connections uh, break down or we tend to lose n number of neurons from our nervous system okay which is going to help us we need neurons in our cerebral cortex so that all the information is getting processed and we have this voluntary response or the voluntary motor response as we age there is tendency that this neural connections will decrease and this primitive reflexes will be seen and particularly in certain nervous system diseases it will be seen again okay so it will be the appearance of primitive reflexes yes uh, ramia has some question body tone and reflexes are same uh body tone and reflexes i will not say they are exactly same but they are related when tone when we are discussing tone it is related to muscle okay muscle has receptors like proprioceptors we will be dealing with proprioception proprioception when we give sensory integration therapy okay and yes again when i'm mentioning sensory integration therapy i do mean that it is not just the reflexes that needs to be done of course reflexes and other therapies has to be done so that child can learn faster in sensory integration we are giving sensory inputs which is needed for reflexes to come into action and we want them to get fatigue at the same time so that higher center can develop so muscles have proprioceptors the proprioceptors are receptors okay they will take sensory input and accordingly they will have response proprioceptors there is golgi tendon organ these are all the physiological terms uh, so uh, this receptors okay based on the reflexes present or not integrated you will see change in the person's body tone or muscle tone as well i hope you were asking about the muscle tone only like uh, the hypotonic hypertonic thing uh i basically i don't know but somebody mentioned muscle tone is important for uh, as a basic step yes so see, i muscle tone. muscle tone is the same thing as this or no it's not uh, exactly the same it. thing but they are related of course of course because it's muscle tone muscular system as i said earlier our nervous system muscular system skeletal system are all connected and muscle tone can be built with exercises of course but if there is uh, ligament laxity it it could be inherited ligament laxity my son himself is hyper flexible in many of the reflex videos if someone sees those videos repeatedly yeah, the person or, or the child on uh, whom i am demonstrating it is my uh, own son you will notice that he has hyper extension at many joints okay he has hyper extension at many joints and he is hyper flexible his tone is lesser compared to uh, the population of children of his age so if he is hypertonic chances are that that his postural system will get affected and i need to be aware about his posture constantly or i need to work on that aspect plus i have to be careful that any time he can get musculoskeletal injuries okay he will be more prone to get injuries if someone has a low tone if they are hyper flexible their strength will be comparatively less and they are more prone to injuries it is not same as primitive reflex but of course they are interlinked and i many a times i feel that uh, my son needs tlr exercises i do tell him i do make him do whenever possible but uh, balancing uh, the life as a therapist as a mom as a wife everything gets difficult at times so maybe i feel like i'm not giving enough but tonic labyrinth and reflex is one such reflex that you need to check out dear this will uh, give you a further insight related to the posture and the muscle tone and everything tlr 
please can you repeat uh, please can you repeat that uh, terminology tlr tonic labyrinthine reflex yeah, uh, the video is there related to that uh, that on youtube and uh, i think shadanya will share it later on the tlr assessment in your group tlr assessment and uh, management na pesna kadu mutu pesara venkata yeah and why i know this no i am very much uh, thankful to all the parents and all my students who asked me at times about all this primitive reflexes and to make videos of it when i was making videos of it na i didn't i never checked it on my son all the reflexes i never got time to check all the reflexes on my son but for this tlr when we were doing that for the video we literally needed a uh, lot of practice uh, for him to do that exercise also he was not able to do it that exercises for tla it was very tough for him so uh, just understand he is not having asd but of course all of us have many sensory uh, things going on with us or even the adults so at that time i noticed that okay this one was a tough task for him and his tla needs to be integrated yes ashwin and damya uh, any one of you can ask first ma'am Yes, yeah, can I ask uh, follow-up yeah. question to the same, um, you know, muscle tone and uh, reflexes here? The, uh, uh, you know, the the things that is mentioned about delayed crawling and all. Now, uh, would would these be the reason? Reflexes be the reason for toe walking and other things? Um, uh, that... Or would it be the muscle tone aspect? Which area should one focus on for constant toe walking? okay see uh, for constant to what walking two things needs to be checked if you are uh, suspecting na if it's a primitive reflex or not simple thing if i am having a fever it could be viral it could be bacterial there is some infection inside my body and i am having fever so there is some issue with my muscular skeletal system and my nervous system so that i am doing toe walking i'm i'm not walking uh, in heel to toe pattern and i am walking in toe pattern it suggests me that there is something wrong now we need to check we need to check for both the things we need to check for the reflex also and for the muscle spasticity as well if you are checking for the reflex check with the plantar reflex first and babinski sign okay babinski sign uh, is uh, positive and all the kids up till 2 years of age if beyond 2 years of age it is present that it indicates that maturation maturation of central nervous system has not happened and child is having positive babinski sign i have made one video on babinski sign also note this down babinski sign babinski sign if you are checking it in a child under 2 years of age and if you are seeing there is pathological response then do not worry our nervous system takes 2 years to get matured but if beyond 2 years of age if you are noticing pathological response or if you are seeing that that sign is present or that reflex is present then it indi indicates that maturation of nervous system has not occurred and we need to do the exercises for integration of plantar reflex or for the babinski sign the, the terms uh, are the more of the uh, physiological terms but someone can keep a note of all these things so later on you can share it in the group and you can search uh, further and i am happy there are so many parents who are active enough to dig deeper in this things so that you can help better yes ashwin and sorry uh, sorry ashwin hi. sorry just one minute i i need to add another thing i said you need to check for the reflex second thing ramya you need to check for the muscle tone if the muscle tone of calf muscles is very high then massaging that area will also help for the massaging and stretching of that muscle will also help further or it will faster the recovery process okay ramya thank you thank you very much okay dear yes ashwin yeah hi thank you so much so is there any uh, you know reflex exercises that uh, will help to develop the emotional quotient um, you know of the child like for example he doesn't smile when we ask him to smile or you know uh, or he doesn't make uh, uh, imitations for example okay fine i would just suggest uh, you to go ahead with the moros reflex exercises uh, it is very mm -hmm. much linked to uh, our uh, emotional system 
or the system which processes uh, the stress as i said earlier and uh, if child is having some thought process continuously going on then they are not able to relate in their environment and for molos reflex it is not just the starfish exercise there is also one easy exercise if you want it's simply crossing your uh, hands over your chest okay child has to cross it and in mm -hmm. lying down position child has to just roll over on bed they can just make a uh, rolling movement turning movements okay continuously or on floor also any place any flat surface if they are uh, crossing their arms over the chest and they are doing rolling that will help a lot in changing that or in uh, improving or modifying their emotional system second thing if child has asd it is uh, seen that uh, their uh, emotional system functions differently from us now this is again a topic uh, needs to be discussed in detail uh, when we talk about neurodiversity okay we all are neurotypical okay so uh, can anyone tell me how much neurotypical they are like are you uh, uh, highly functioning neurotypical or low functioning neurotypical no we don't have any scale na, for us to be normal like mm -hmm. we are like uh, able to relate if someone is smiling we give back the smile and all but we don't have any scale for that same way when there is neurodiversity na, i will not scale it i will not scale a child i'll just accept one thing for sure that that brain is functioning in a different way but if there is emotional outburst if they are not just responding the smile back every time okay i, I I'm ready to accept it. Even if they're not giving me the constant eye contact, but they are following my commands, I'm ready to accept that also. But if there is a behavioral issue, if uh, there is a emotional outburst, frequent emo emotional outburst, then go ahead with modo reflex integration. Okay. Okay. And uh, one more thing. Try to make them imitate breathing, deep breathing. Mm -hmm. when we you are working on imitation just work on imitation of deep breathing that will help a lot okay mm. okay okay uh, yes ma'am actually i'm trying to make my daughter imitate breathing for so many months ma'am i couldn't make it do so is there any way or any video if that can help please power ma'am Okay, I, I have not made a video on imitation or imitation of breathing, but I would just suggest uh, that uh, if you can just tell me uh, any other issues along with this uh, imitation of breathing. If your child has fidgeting, if your child... Uh, yeah, has she a, has fidgeting, ma'am. She has many seeking issues, sensory seeking. Yes. So uh, if you will work on that spinal gallant uh trunk incubator reflex that i just uh, shared on that ppt and if you work, work on that spinal gallant reflex first and then come back to this imitation uh, it will be easier okay ma'am okay okay so, and uh, uh, Reena, yes okay yeah can yeah, i go ahead she, uh, yes, yeah just uh, yeah and she does w sitting also but whenever i correct she'll change her posture so should I work on Tony Taylor as well? Yes, yes, yes. You need to work on that. See, uh, why okay. I told Ashwin directly to go on imitation of breathing? Because he already told me that uh, the child is able to process the auditory information, able to target on the visual uh, inputs or the visual uh, things placed, able to give a good motor response and at the same time balance uh, the body. So I directly told Okay, okay, everything is fine. Just uh, check out once for the spinal gallant trunk incurvatum reflex. At that time, I shared that slide. And then I told like, okay, for imitation, if you're working, go with the breathing first, deep breathing first, and then go ahead further. But for you, uh, Lavani, I would suggest that you need to check uh, the reflexes uh, because if there is W setting, if there is fidgeting, then uh, two or three reflexes needs to be focused and i had one question from shalanya she had already messaged me that and uh, told me today that if uh, more than three or four reflexes needs to be worked on then how we should process if your child is beyond three years of age i would suggest that go ahead with all the exercises together it's fine it's fine because we have to work on the more uh, reflexes we have to 
give those exercises that's fine if you are not going level wise or if you are not able to manage uh, timing or the child is not <coughs> able to cooperate with this many exercise what you can do is based on the hierarchy based on the hierarchy means try to integrate the automatic reflexes first then go with the spinal level reflexes then brain stem then mid brain okay and if okay, you are not doing all the three or four exercises shown in the video it's fine if you are sticking to any one exercises it's okay but you need to increase the repetitions then okay okay can you please repeat yeah can you please repeat concentrate on automatic reflex then on uh, first con uh, concentrate on automatic reflex then spinal level reflex then uh, okay. brain stem level reflex then mid brain reflexes but mid brain reflexes uh, are uh, part of push uh, push reflexes are part of mid brain reflexes so if they are present many of them remain present throughout the life i will uh, make a detailed video for the, all those reflexes of mid brain level reflexes there are no videos of it from my end because uh, mid brain level reflexes are not always considered as primitive okay primitive when we say a primitive it is something needs to be integrated but in mid brain is it mid brain mid -brain reflexes also, are present in all of us yes tell me brain gym is also the same mid brain and brain gym is also is the the exercises are all same yes yes See, there are um, there are four to five mid brain reflexes mid, mid brain level reflexes and brain gym exercises target a uh, few of them not all of them but few they are part of it okay i actually no, one doubt i have simulating <coughs> yeah reema so yeah okay yeah uh, yes. reema yeah, so good yeah yeah so although i joined late but i did hear the answers and the last part of what you were saying i think what came across was extremely knowledgeable and very yeah. well to was about like you know the way you were explaining was very simple thank you thank Having you dear can you hear me reema yes reema can you hear me Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rima, having all it is uh, the way it was very complex topic. I think the primitive reflexes, yeah, and a lot of. But the way you were explaining, I think uh, it's and the amount of knowledge you're giving on a few uh, free webinar to empower the parents. I think hats off to you first, Rima. Okay, That's you so what much. I would like to give you. Uh, also, Rima, I would understand that this is something where we as parents uh, cannot do this unless and until we get a back to back guidance. so for my child uh, is there a way i could work with you together and we could check the reflexes and we could integrate the reflexes because i know for sure his primitive reflexes are are uh, needs to be integrated but i am i am i am just a google parent yes not like you know knowledge in yeah so yeah yes uh i i do give online sessions but uh, actually shadanya is aware that uh, i am going through some medical things uh, in my family and uh, with me also it happens on and off and uh, okay. if you are ready to keep patience yeah. with me as i said now i am also okay. having own sensory things going on if you are ready okay. to keep patience with me because uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it happens with shadanya also that i may not be able to reply for few days or get connected easily okay. Uh, I have one right. parent today uh, in this meet also, uh, Sapna Vashni. If she is there in this second meeting, I'm not sure. Uh, I couldn't okay. connect back to her due to some issues. Uh, I got the point. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I feel very mm -hmm. guilty at no, that uh, part of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, very uh, honest of you. Very honest of you to say that. You could have easily said, "No, no, I'm very busy." But uh, I mean, you know, we are all human beings in this journey, right? You, we all have issues and challenges. And, uh, there are a lot of things that yeah, have yeah, happened uh, yeah, personally yeah. with me in last two years in this uh, uh -huh. COVID thing. Uh -huh. So it, okay. it's getting difficult. Right, right. Yeah. Uh huh. But I we, to... but Rima, I think let's. I would really, really like to work together, and I mean, you know, we can go slow. and we could see how you i mean even you need to be comfortable with us as parents right it is not just yes, sure. us parents yeah no, no. so uh, how I'll, do we get in touch with you sure uh, i'll just uh, ask uh, shalanya to me the whatsapp mm -hmm. group of all the parents that they were present who were present today i think 40 parents are there already if they can be in how will she know like i just joined and she will not know my details okay I, i'm just sharing my email id or oh, for just uh, this group i just uh, request or uh, not to share it further i'm just sharing my whatsapp mm -hmm. number over here that would make yes. sense i think yeah, yeah. 
if uh, ma'am yes. you can do one thing ma'am uh, yes. you can uh, create a group immediately for few uh, uh, and you can share that link so that everyone can join but i, I don't have numbers of everyone yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah ma'am you so share someone link to your ma'am if someone can do it on behalf of yeah, me yeah i'll do it ma'am yes yes i'll do it ma'am someone do it on behalf of me it would be easier because i won't i'm not that tech friendly yet and yeah. uh, uh, i'll do i'll create a group and i'll share the link here in the chat box ma'am so that everyone can join sure, uh, sure. i think makes sense yeah 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 yes i'm i'm very thankful because every time no when i was a teacher at that time also i got a very good uh, group of students who have constantly inspired mm-hmm. me to do better and better and with the parents also uh, shalania was there even uh, uh, it was the first time when she messaged me i was uh, out of uh, just uh, sitting outside and i see you and i just messaged her that currently i'm sorry i cannot help you and still she waited and uh, at times it happens on and off something is going on and um, because of as you can hear now uh, this change in my voice now after talking i got uh, no dues uh, because of which i have to leave my job also as a lecturer and i'm just working offline uh, with the kids only offline working with the kids and online at times i do work but i'm not uh, able to uh, maintain that constant frequency and i'm working on that and i hope with your prayers i'll be able to make it soon am um, i have a doubt yes 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 uh, if while writing if kids are uh, st- uh, opening no the kids mouth is opening while writing and uh, sometimes the saliva comes in and sometimes when they are concentrating on one particular thing we we can understand that they are concentrating and trying to answer but at at those times whenever they keen on one thing the mouth is open why is it so is it also because of reflex there is one reflex known as palmo mental reflex palm related to palm and the muscle uh, here there is one muscle mentalis so palmo mental reflex is one such reflex when there is something touching the palm there is continuous twitching or some contractions occurring uh, in and there's a there's a jaw areas uh, so they tend to open their mouth second thing happens is motor overflow motor overflow happens whenever there is some cerebral damage when there is some amount of brain yes if uh, someone uh, ask the doubt uh, can you please repeat the doubt there's some doubt was like sun is like screaming happy screaming hooting all the time like yay oh and like this these kind of sounds yes. okay okay and as we discussed uh, the child has also uh, a stone like uh, secretion or thick solid secretion in the ear which had to be removed via ent okay yes, so ma'am. work on three aspects modus reflex motor reflex yes, integration exercise second yes, thing check on the digestive system try to have a good digestive system or uh, the the good gut gut health it's the most difficult thing it's very easier for me to say in one sentence like okay check for the digestive system or uh, work on the digestive system but it's very tough as a parent to regulate or to uh, have that optimum functioning of gut okay and the third yes, thing yes. maximum vestibular exercises see what happens the when i said earlier motor that like musculoskeletal system and nervous system are linked it's a very simple thing if your child is physically active there is more chance that the digestive system will work better okay because yes. because of physical exercises there will be set, uh, sweating many of toxins will flush out another thing they will drink more water if they are sweating okay the tendency to drink water increase again that will help further in flushing out the toxins and maintaining that uh, good ph level for the body for good digestion and another thing you need to work apart from this if they are physically active another thing you need to work on will be the food that they eat i'm a very strict about three food items and i always call them as white poison that's uh, sugar then comes yes, the sir. meta 
and third is the corn starch nowadays if you go through you know, like if someone hears this uh, if manufacturing companies they might ban me if i say this but still i'm saying this uh, many of the food items nowadays are having lot and lot of corn starch i don't know why but if it does have a negative impact too much of corn starch or starch in any form will have impact on our digestive system and our excretory system that is our kidneys the renal profile that also uh, makes it difficult you know, for the children or the growing kids when they are exposed to food items with uh, this corn starch maida and sugar they have effect on their nervous system as well so do check that these three things should not be there in the diet of your kids Uh, you said sugar, yeah. corn starch, and sec water. What? What is the second one? <coughs> Meda. Meda. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hello. Okay. Ma'am, I have a doubt. I have a question. Yes. Uh, my daughter is uh, three point five years of age. She has a history of seizures, but then uh, from last one one and a half year, she uh, is free from seizures. The problem that I'm facing is uh, she continuously thumb sucks, and uh, without that, she will not sleep. And whenever she is free, she will put the thumb in her mouth, and then she starts sucking it. If I put it down, then she will get agitated. And also, I have used uh, various uh, therapists have suggested to use uh, benzoate formite solution with, to put it on her thumb. But then also, uh, she so sucks it. She feels first. a little. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. We don't want such chemicals to go inside our child's body and affect their system. Second thing. Hmm. see yeah. uh when child uh, and currently the medicines of seizures would be on i guess yes yes okay so what happens now when a child goes through episodes of seizure like mm. we just observe our child going through episodes of seizure okay and we get mm. terrified even uh mm. if it's uh, a child coming to my center and if they have seizure attack i also feel terrified okay and we feel like how can we help this child at present but we are not able to help them okay we have to go with the medical interventions and then and then only it can be stopped because it's a life threatening situation now just imagine mm-hmm. a person going through that seizure how much terrified mm-hmm. that 3 year old or 4 year old child will be to suffer mm-hmm. that seizure which we cannot even tolerate to see okay so that mm. that induces stress response fear response okay child would be frightful mm. because it's not in their control and seizures are involuntarily any time that occurs no doubt from last one year she is not having it fortunately thankfully good but mm. somewhere in their brain they have this experience stored that mm. episode of seizures that experience of fear is stored it does affect mm. their psychology and they mm. will be in stress so when they are sleeping mm. they are not mm. uh, feeling safe and if they are mm. sucking the thumb they feel mm. safe and that yes. is the reason they suck it the nervous system gets calm down and they get a peaceful sleep we don't yeah. want that chemical over here and to take away that and again we are giving one more the response now like okay if i suck my thumb i will feel uh, disgusted again we are mm. giving a negative experience to the child better mm. is let your child suck the thumb i understand i understand your concern as a parent because that mm. will create a change in the shape of their mouth second thing the yes. dental structure will get affected because of mm. it rather what mm. you can do is if your child is cool mm. and plus the medicines are going on so that will also have then add on side effects but sometimes yeah. the medicines are necessary when yes. the benefits are more than the side effects yeah it outweighs the side effects yes so we need the medicines we cannot do anything about it at present okay now mm. one thing don't uh, treat this thumb sucking thumb sucking is a response mm. to that frightful experience mm. okay mm-hmm. try to mm. work on the cause do one thing before sleeping if you can develop a routine where you are giving some massage or soothing massage or a storytelling mm. session whichever is feasible for you as a parent and for the mm. child if you can give deep pressure and mm. if you can do that one exercise of uh, putting their arms over the chest and uh, 
rolling uh, that for moros the flex integration hmm. Okay? Hmm. Hmm. so if you can incorporate this routine that would be much hmm. better of course it will give you a delayed result not that fast hmm. like that chemical but again that chemical will have other harmful effects hmm. 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 Okay. okay so just don't use that chemical okay Okay. Hello, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, 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 ma'am
ma'am as we are running out of time and you are i could see you are uh, struggling your throat is not good. <laughs> uh can we go with the questions quickly the yes, already yes. people have asked me yes and yes, yes. you you said what are automatic reflexes right yes yes and can we can we know what are spinal level reflexes yeah i'll, I'll just share it and uh, uh, you all can quickly also quickly go take with the screen shot quickly go with the types of reflexes and it uh, affects and wha- what has yes. to be done huh yes i'll share uh, this uh, ppt on screen and uh, okay. you all can take the screenshots as well just just a second and this hand just a second everyone is able to see the screen yeah ma'am okay uh, in automatic reflexes we have moros reflex gallant trunk reflex or it is also known as spinal gallant reflex parachute reflex and lend you reflex now you will uh, not need to worry much about the parachute reflex it is present in all of us it doesn't get integrated it is a protective reflex if it is not present then it is a case of worry we will discuss that for moros reflex and gallant to reflex i am not going in detail because i feel it's uh, i have shared it already on uh, the youtube videos uh, which you can go through but moros reflex i am just sharing it is also a protective response if we uh, come across any situation where we are frightened this reflex gets activated okay and because of that this all the issues can occur the mood swings sudden change in behavior anxiety visual challenges learning difficulties depression adhd all the uh, asd emotional and social immaturity so uh, when ashwin was asking me about uh, imitation of smile i do insisted to uh, go on integration with moro reflex with arms crossed over and rolling here is one on mute amma chilli kachikina tani kudunga paarava Yeah. This uh, rolling is a somersault or a side rolling, madam? Not somersault. Not somersault. Uh, just crossing the arms and rolling on uh, floor or bed, any flat surface. Not somersault. Okay. 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 Got it. Um, uh, one question here, ma'am. Um, rolling on the bed with the head uh, lifted up or head should be on the No, no, head lying down. I'll share video for this in the WhatsApp group created. Just remind me by today evening. I'll share for this rolling video. Thank you. Because uh, this retained motor reflex is related to emotional and social immaturity, coordination and balance challenges, poor tolerance to change in situations, dyslexia and dyscalculia. I'm not explaining all these things in detail because I suppose that all of you understand what are the things. Uh, then further, this is a description of it. I'm not going in detail about what is visual challenge, what is anxiety. Now, parachute reflex. As I said earlier, parachute reflex is present in all of us. It doesn't get integrated. It should be there in all of us. Okay. Now, neurotypical individuals have this. Now, if, as you can see in the image. someone has to go on mute please now as you can see in the image when they are holding the child in upside down position their head is going down what they will do they will try to protect their body by taking their arms in front of them okay so they will protect their head from getting injured when the head is lowered they feel okay my head will get injured i should extend my arms to protect myself and the car So that's the parachute reflex. If it is not uh, present, okay, or if it is absent, or if it is abnormal, 
It is indicative of cerebral palsy, or severe motor disorders. Okay, so if there is underlying uh, brain damage, severe brain damage of uh, cerebral cortex, this parachute reflex will not be seen or it will be abnormal. There will be asymmetry. Child might extend one arm and might not extend the other arm, which indicates there is partial brain damage. We have right and left brain. Partial brain damage means any one side is affected, other side is not affected. So there will be asymmetry. And, if, and this reflex is mediated via our inner ears, the semicircular canals, the vestibular system. So vision occluded also we do same response. Even if my eyes are closed and if someone moves my body upside down, my head is going down, my response or my reflex will be to extend my hands to protect my head. Okay? Clear with this? Parachute reflex. I'm extending because I have not made video on parachute reflex. Because we don't if you can mute all, uh, please mute. I'll just, I think I'll just you are mute. talking aloud <laughs> because of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So parachute reflex is a reflex which is, which is present in all of us. It, it doesn't need to be integrated. If it is uh, if uh, that reflex is not present, then it is indication of some underlying damage. Now moving on further. Gallant uh, trunk reflex. Again, I'm moving faster because we have discussed uh, this reflex already. Now, we do use wheel bargle brushing protocol for integration of Gallant's trunk incubator. Uh, over here, Ashwin and I guess one more parent had asked me and uh, I think Janvi, when I asked her about fidgeting, one parent said like uh, fidgeting is there uh, in them use this wheel bagger brushing protocol this will help a lot if you're working on spinal gallant reflex if if your child is not able to do the exercises if you're working on wheel bagger brushing protocol then also it will help lend you reflex support uh, supporting the infant horizontally in air in prone position the child uh, on our hand or if child is grown up of course we are not able to do it that way we need support from someone else now if you are moving head there will be movement of arms also like if you are doing passive flexion or that is bending forward of head what will happen as you can see in the response hip knee and spine and elbow everything will get flexed if you are extending the head everything gets extended that is Lend use the reflex and it takes time to integrate. Up till three years of age, it could be present, so it's completely fine. And mostly uh, with this reflex, if it is present, it has some issues on or the effect on our postural system. If retained lend use reflex is there, there will be low muscle tone, poor posture, poor motor development, short term memory difficulty, weak upper body. Attention and concentration problem and toe walking can be seen. So along with TLR, I had already mentioned about tonic labyrinth and reflex when we discuss about posture. You also need to check out on Lendu reflex. For integration of Lendu reflex, again like parachute reflex, I will explain this one because I have not made video for this. I am not able to make it. So deep pressure, proprioception activities where well, a lot of pushing and pulling is done and weight bearing activities will help a lot crawling will also help okay so these exercises will help if your child has some postural issues give them deep pressure deep joint approximation proprioception activities and weight bearing activities okay heavy work is proprioception activities heavy work is proprioception different animal walks also helping uh, uh, are also kind of proprioception activities now all these are spinal cord reflexes spinal cord reflexes rooting reflex sucking reflex palmer reflex plantar reflex related to the sole of feet plantar reflex i had mentioned 
to check along with Bibinski's reflex uh, uh, to I guess uh, someone had asked me about uh, toe walking uh, whether to see the muscles or the reflex and I have said to check this two reflex also the planter and Bibinski there are two huh? Bibinski and Babski these are two different so palmer planter reflex then flexor withdrawal and ex extensor withdrawal reflex cross extensor withdrawal reflex stepping reflex Bebinski reflex and Babski reflex. We'll go on further with this. Rooting, I'm not going in detail. I've already uh, explained this in one of the videos. Rooting and sucking. So I'm moving further. Palmer grasp also I have, uh, I have explained. Planter also is explained. Flexor withdrawal reflex. Now, this is a protective reflex. Whenever our uh, child or whenever the sole of their feet is getting touched, they tend to take away their uh, limb. Okay, they withdraw. And it is known as flexor withdrawal, but it is because the moment of flexion happens. Okay, so when a child is lying down and if we gently stroke sole of their foot, they will do immediate flexion. They will withdraw their limb. They will move away their leg from that stimulus okay it is present since uh, 28 weeks of gestation and it is integrated within one or two months if it is not integrated child will have delayed walking also okay but usually um, if uh, the physical milestones like walking and all are not achieved then we need to work on this reflex and to fatigue this reflex again brushing protocol will help a lot Extensive withdrawal is when sole of flexed foot, already bent foot is there, like already limb is in flexion and if we are stroking it, child will push the stimulus. The leg will go into extension, adduction and internal rotation. I'll just bring a doll to show this. Just give me a moment. See, when I said no, flexor withdrawal, the previous one. When you stroke over here, the sole of the foot and child suddenly flexes the limb. It is known as flexor withdrawal. And it gets integrated by one or two months. If it is not integrated, the child will show delayed walking. Okay. Extensor withdrawal is a child is lying with that hip and knee flex like this. And you are stroking it. Okay. And then child pushes further and goes, their hip goes into internal rotation and adduction like this. Okay, child was like this. You are stroking it and they are moving like this. It was this. You stroked and the movement is this. Even the internal rotation adduction. Okay. Now it needs to be integrated by four months. And if this reflex are retained, there is tactile defensive behavior. Because over here, the stimulus was touched, tactile, gentle stroking. And there was such a response even to a gentle stroking beyond four months of age. Of course, there will be some abnormality in walking as well. So for integration, joint compression and deep or maximum weight bearing position making the child's in standing position or in uh, in the uh, standing on different surfaces also will help a lot moving on further cross extensor withdrawal see all these three are kind of same flexor withdrawal extensor withdrawal and crossed extensor withdrawal over here the child will be lying down and over here if you are getting some noxious stimuli Noxious means painful. Previous two 
over gentle stroking there was not noxious stimuli but over here if you are pinching what will happen the opposite limb i am pinching on right side the left side will go into adduction and extension will be like this suppose this is standing but suppose child is lying down okay and if you are pinching over here and this leg goes into this movement rotate it then claws extensor the doll is there it is present up till one or two months of age again if it is retained difficulty in walking posture or poor posture will be seen balance maintenance will be difficult and hip adductor tightness will be there so child might have scissoring gait they might walk like this so for integration butterfly sitting position butterfly sitting joint compression and sometimes calipers or orthosis may be needed that is ankle foot orthosis or calipers further moving on stepping reflex this is a, this is a very um, fascinating reflex for new parents because a 6 month old child if you take a child or uh, like from birth up till 6 months of age and if you are holding them okay and if even if the sole touches something they will try to lift their leg and walk as if they are taking a step so parents will be fascinated okay wow my child is trying to walk it is a reflex it is a stepping reflex you are holding the baby and the sole is touching any object couch floor anything and they are trying to take a step then it is a stepping reflex okay if this reflex is not integrated then also toe walking can be seen but parents whose kids are toe walkers they need not to worry like okay ma'am again we have to work on stepping reflex also don't worry even if you are working with the exercises of plantar reflex it will help you for integration of this reflex as well there is a thing called dermatom dermatom means different areas on our skin which perceive touch sensation so plantar reflex is related to sole of feet stepping reflex is also related to sole of feet so the fibers are almost similar so exercises will help don't worry going on for the babinski reflex i made video for this so i just suggest go ahead with this uh, i'll just move faster okay now babinski reflex babinski is different i have made video of that already babinski reflex if you are giving deep pressure to both the palm of both the hands again there will be uh, there will be movement of head and eyes and mouth if you are giving pressure on palm pressure on palm you will see this response in the child that is babinski reflex it is similar to palmomental reflex but in palmomental reflex even if one hand is touching some object there is some response in the mouth in babinski reflex it is deep pressure applied on both the hands together okay it is integrated within 4 months if this reflex is retained there will be chance of cerebral palsy and mental retardation also it is a big challenge if there is mental retardation again it's a huge topic to be discussed so i'm moving further <coughs> and yes babinski reflex for integration of babinski reflex even i have not gone through any um, exercises of it currently i am researching further on this babinski reflex it is very much uh, less uh, what to say less literature is available related to it as soon as possible i will come along with the integration exercises for it but it is very challenging when it is when babinski reflex is present now all these are brain stem reflexes atnr stnr tlr positive supporting reflex and negative supporting reflex atnr i am not explaining at present video is there that's why 
STLR also videos are there. TLR videos are there. Now, positing, positive supporting reflex. If you are holding a child in vertical position and if they are placed on ground, what will happen? They will try to extend their body and they will try to stand. Though not for longer period, immediately after some time they will take their leg up. First they will try to stand and then they will take their leg up. It is normal from birth up till 6 months of age. Negative supporting reflex is opposite to this or consequence. First there will be extension or locking of knees. Second will be flexion of knees. That is negative supporting reflex. Both gets integrated by 6 months and if it is retained, there will be extensor spasticity. Means such kids will have spasticity of extensor group of muscles. The knee extensors like even if the back will go into extension like this. So cerebral palsy, kids with cerebral palsy will have retained positive and negative supporting reflexes. Again, easy proprioception, weight bearing and strengthening exercises will help. Okay, again, balance, posture and gait disturbances will be there. Moving further, midbrain, as I said earlier, many of us have this reflexes present. These are postural reflexes. These reflexes are necessary for all of us to do our day-to-day -day activities. Few of them do get integrated. But I'm planning to make videos for this. I'll do it as soon as possible for midbrain. So I'm stopping over here today for midbrain uh, reflexes, for postural reflexes. If I won't be able to come up with the videos, I'll again connect with you all and will explain this further. So better I stop here because I feel the quality is getting deteriorated. I won't be able to explain it nicely. So midbrain level reflexes or postural reflexes will discuss later on but apart from that if there are any doubts up till now go ahead yeah ppt is already there on slide share 